Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another game review from MN Gaming. This week we're going to be reviewing Neo Automata. Automata? Automato? I'm not really sure, but you know what I'm talking about. And this week our review is going to be done fully in English. We're just kind of trying things out here. And if you have strong opinions about this, please feel free to drop them in the comment section below. Thank you. With that being said, let's just jump right into one of my favorite games of all time. The first thing I want to talk about is the thing that I have the least to say about, and that is the graphics. I played the game on the PS4, and the graphics looked pretty good, and I also uh, did play the game briefly on PC, and the graphics were even better. I really like the whole um, urban environment meets natural environment kind of post-apocalyptic aesthetic they've got going on there. This game is set like 10,000 plus years in the future, so... Uh, the world kind of looks like it's been taken over by plant life and all that. I personally really love the cutscenes of the game as well. I feel like a lot of them are really exciting to watch and they seem to have a lot of detail put into them as well. In terms of uh, character design and enemy design, I also find it to be quite distinctive. I feel like um, they are very unique and personally, I really love the design of these uh, robot enemies, the machines in the game, because I feel like they take really simple concepts and varied different ideas and still manage to make them all look similar. Like there are machines that look like birds, machines that look like worms, machines that look like little toy men walking around and even though they're so different and unique they have enough common points between them that you are able to identify what they are immediately right a lot of the times you might see an enemy and you might not even know what they do but based on the design you can kind of get an idea of it and usually it's right um as for the main characters themselves i really love their designs i think that they have created an entire like group of cosplayers who are just dedicated to bringing these costumes to life and I couldn't be happier because it looks amazing, right? I've seen a few local cosplayers cosplay 2B as well, so shout out to those people, you did a great job. The next thing I want to talk about is sound, or music, or audio, OST, whatever you want to call it. So let me preface this by saying that Nier Automata has what I believe is one of the best OSTs or soundtracks of any video game that I have ever played in my entire life. And I know that seems like a huge statement, so let me back it up with some information. When you take the soundtrack of Nier Automata, and when you look at the number of unique songs in it, you will notice that the number is uh, quite few, around 40 songs if I'm not wrong. And what makes this interesting is that each one of these songs has multiple versions. And I don't mean like the EDM version and the ukulele version and the a cappella version or whatever. I mean it in the sense that these multiple versions use different instruments, convey different emotions, and are used at different points in the game. So if there was a theme that was supposed to be played at a certain location, you would have the quiet version of the theme, which uses very quiet sounds, quiet instruments, does not have any vocals or anything like that, and you would have the medium version of the game, which kind of bumps up the tempo a little bit, makes it a little bit faster, a little bit uh, more instruments, a little bit louder as well. And then you have the loud or the epic version of the soundtrack, which uh, basically takes that same theme and just cranks it up to the maximum. So you have beautiful vocals, you have lovely orchestral instrumentation, huge drums and just creating that epic feeling and it's still the same melody as that quiet song so what near automata is able to do is give you unique music tied to specific locations and specific emotions at specific moments in time so 
you could revisit the same area that you were in two hours ago and the music and the mood and the vibe of the scene would be completely different and yet it would be using essentially the same theme, the same musical theme, just with different instruments and a different feeling. It's quite spectacular. In fact, one of the endings has a version of a song that was actually sung by the cast and crew of this game as like a huge crowd, which just sounds really nice. And I'm not gonna go into it any more than that, but my point here is that here you have a game where Every song is memorable, every song is beautiful, every song is unique and it fits whatever is going on on the screen perfectly every single time. There has never been a moment in this game where a music played and I was like, huh, this doesn't really suit this scene. Never happened. Not once. And the amount of different styles, the different genres that they exp experiment with, the different instruments that they try to use. I cannot believe that a group of people exists in this world who have such impeccable taste in music. Because usually when I listen to video game OSTs, I end up picking a few favorites, right? So those are the ones that I would revisit. Like for example, uh, from Xanarkand, from Final Fantasy X, right? Or, uh, one of the last boss themes from the same game, but I wouldn't randomly just listen to the whole OST. But in Nier Automata's case, I can listen to this entire OST, any version of any of the songs, and still just be completely amazed. I love every single one of these songs. I feel like each of them was perfectly picked and perfectly performed and perfectly suits the game. And I do not know a bigger compliment to give a video game soundtrack than that it just works all the time. There's never been a moment where I felt like a song did not suit a situation or a scene. It's just amazing. Phenomenal, really. A phenomenal achievement of music for games. Let's talk about the gameplay of Nier Automata. But to get a really good picture of what makes this game's gameplay really good, you gotta understand a little something about the game director Yoko Taro's previous games, right? Yoko Taro uh, is known for creating games which have really interesting stories, really dark themes, really fascinating characters, and kind of mid to low tier gameplay. I know that there might be a lot of Yogotaro fans in the uh, comments going like, no, they're pretty great, you just gotta give them a chance. Come on, guys. Come on. I'm a fan. I know. It's not, it's not good. We gotta accept it. We gotta rip that band-aid off. It's not good. But that's okay, because one of the people... Oh, one of the groups of people who were also fans of Yoko Taro's work are Platinum Games. This is the same Bayonetta, Revengeance, uh, Platinum Games, right? Vanquish as well, I believe, is one of theirs. Fast-paced character action games, that's what they're known for. And a terrible Legend of Korra game, but we don't talk about that. Platinum Games and Square Enix came together in what is like a dream team of minds meeting. And Yoko Taro was finally able to create a game where he could focus on the story and make it the best, most heartbreaking story that he could come up with. And you have the boys and girls at Platinum Games who are just doing everything they can to make sure that the gameplay is sharp as heck. Right? This game, who oh boy, it is so much fun to play. I, I, I could leave the story aside and just play the game for the gameplay sometimes. Sometimes I just like to level grind because it is just fun to fight. You have weak attacks, strong attacks, jumping, dodging. You have hacking. You have riding animals and crashing into things. There's a lot going on here. And all of it is really, really well fine-tuned, right? So you have... A character action game where because you're an android you basically have the ability to add and remove chips from your body you know like ram chips or whatever but like what it does is it basically allows you to customize your build you might want to be somebody who 
is more physically attacking or maybe you would like to be somebody who's really fast or perhaps you would like to be somebody who slows down time when you dodge which is also an option by the way or maybe you like to swing your swords and have like you know bleach style lasers just go from your sword to hit the enemy which is like 50 feet away from you maybe that's your thing maybe you like to do kamehameha of the sword i don't know i don't know your life but you know what this game has got an option for you there's so many different chips and so many combinations of chips that you can create so many different builds for yourself that you could play the game multiple times and literally never use the same build and still have the same amount of fun and the same amount of destructive capability. It's just that you have to think a little bit differently about the way that you play this time. My personal favorite way of playing the game is by making it so that when I swing my sword, a laser thing kind of just flies off and hits enemies from far away. I really like it because it reminds me of stuff like Bleach, you know, when Ichigo swings his sword, there's like this half moon kind of like energy blast that hits his enemies. I love that. I, here's me just playing out that fantasy in a Platinum Games game. So that's awesome. Another really phenomenal part about the gameplay of Nier Automata is the fact that this game has so many different styles of gameplay that it can constantly switch between and yet each one of them is developed to perfection. Nier Automata probably has five or six or even more different genres and styles of gameplay within it and each one of them functions perfectly. You might have a 3D hack and slash like Devil May Cry, you might have a Metroidvania situation kind of like Hollow Knight or Castlevania or you know Metroid, uh, you might have a top-down hack and slash like Binding of Isaac, you might also have like a twin stick shooter you know and just have a top-down view. You might have a text adventure, I'm not kidding, it's a real thing and it's actually pretty interesting. You might have a hacking mini game where it's like a bullet hell uh, and it's just a lot. There's a lot going on in this game and this game uses all of it to its advantage by constantly keeping you on your toes. Answer me this game liker, how many times have you played a Ubisoft game or any other AAA game and you end up doing the same activities over and over again for 10 hours, 20 hours, 30 hours, 50 hours. A lot, right? This game is the opposite of that. This game takes pride in just changing things constantly to make it so that you are never bored. You are never stuck doing the same thing too much. The game always innovates and pushes itself and just keeps reinventing what it means to play it so that you are never stuck in the same experience for too long. It just, from start to finish, has so much to offer you that you would just be amazed, really. This game makes me think that the question of whether Castlevania should be 2D or 3D is irrelevant because this game shows me that it can be both. And maybe it should be both. And maybe it'll be much more amazing if it's both. When a boss that you're fighting goes from a top-down perspective like Binding of Isaac to something like Devil May Cry to something like uh, Hollow Knight in the same boss battle, that's, that's wild. And yet it's exciting. And what ties all of this different systems together is the fact that all of them have the same control scheme. I cannot overstate how brilliant this is. The game can go from one genre or style of gameplay to the other and you will not find it confusing even for a second because every style of these gameplays always has the same controls within Nier Automata. So whether you are in a jet shooting at other projectiles or whether you are just a person with a sword or whether you are a large mecha sized titanic robot or whatever it is you will have the same control schemes. Light attack, a strong attack, jump, dodge. All of this carries forward with you. So when you shift perspective, you are still in control. There's never a moment of, oh no, okay, it's a, it's a, it's a 2D game now. What, what's, what's jump, what's, what's attack? Okay, I don't know what to do. Like there's never any of that. It's seamless. And that's, that's mwah, so good. Love it. Love it so much. If you want to play this game and you don't really care about story, you still get a 
ton out of it. This is Platinum Games polished to their best. This is Yoko Taro's writing polished to its very, very best. This game is worth playing just for the gameplay alone. Here's a twist for you. Let's talk about post game value before we talk about story. This is only for this particular game, but you'll see why. This game has a lot of post game value, like a lot. Did you know that this game has 26 endings, one for each letter of the alphabet, ending A, ending B, you know, like that. And to be fair, uh, I think it's endings A to E that are canon or uh, important enough to really consider. A lot of the other endings are just joke endings. So one of the parts of the game which post game value comes from is the fact that you could go chasing the five canon endings of this game, right? But the other part is just finding out all the random weird ways in which Yoko Taro lets you kill yourself or destroy the world to get yourself an ending. And it's hilarious. Stuff like eating a fish, going fishing, blowing yourself up inside your base, ignoring a call. All these random, seemingly unrelated things. You could just do them and the game will be like, well done, you finished the game, here's the credits, and then you'll just get a particular uh, ending. So it's just really interesting and fun to just try really random things in the game to see whether you're able to unlock one of these endings. So that's one fun factor. The other thing is that Neo Automata by design is meant to be played more than once, right? So when you finish the game for the first time, you have a notification pop-up which basically says, Hey, Square Enix, thanks for playing our game, but this game is meant to be played more than once, and when you play it the second time, you will get a different experience, and they are completely right. The first playthrough of the game is being played through the perspective of 2B, who is the tall, sexy android lady, and the second playthrough is being played by... is, is being played from the perspective of 9S, which is 2B's little assistant Otacon kind of character, you know? He's like a hacker, an information gatherer, and a real curious little boy. And it's a very different experience because you're no longer the damage dealer of your group. You're no longer the powerful one. You end up seeing a very different side of 2B through 9S's eyes, right? And when you finish the game for the second time, then the third playthrough begins. The third playthrough of Nier Automata is... Wow, it is something else. I, I cannot spoil anything because it has to be played by yourself, but you can imagine that the first two playthroughs of Nier Automata, each one of them taking about 15 hours each, is the prologue for the real story which takes place in the third playthrough where you shift perspective from 2B to 9S and you know for at different points of the story the stakes get that much higher a lot of the world building that was created finally comes to a head and you start seeing what are the problems in this world what are the secrets in this world what's really going on here and things start falling apart in the best most interesting engaging and freaking amazing way so does this game have post game value yeah it does it has a lot of it just because even replaying the game is that much fun you can have you can try the same game with so many different kinds of builds as well which completely changes your experience and there is an option in the game to completely delete your save file and start all over again for some reason and maybe you'd want to do that you know maybe you just want to do something wild like that for some reason. No spoilers in this review, but it just keeps increasing the post-game value of this game. This game is just meant to be replayed, and that's awesome. Neo Automata is a game that is a spin-off of the original Nier 
which was released for PS3 and Xbox, I think. And that game was a spin-off of Drakengard, which was released for the PS2, I believe. So basically, a spin-off of a spin-off of an obscure Japanese uh, hack-and-slash dragon-riding weirdly depressing game is what Nier Automata is, right? And the story basically seems to be that it is like 10,000 plus years in the future. Humanity has basically left Earth to live on the moon for some complicated reasons, and aliens have invaded the world, right? So to fight these aliens, humanity sends out a group of androids who look like pretty anime characters. And to fight these androids, the aliens sent out a group of machines, which look like little toy robots. You might be thinking at this point, androids, machines, aren't they like the same thing? And to that I say, very clever. Play the game and find out. You'll love this game. This game takes this simple concept of two armies fighting each other in what is basically an indirect proxy war, and they get so much out of it. All the characters are very interesting, the plot is quite cool, the different twists and turns are really, really good. There are some gut-wrenching moments in the story here and there that'll honestly make you go like, bruh, and maybe like stare at a wall for a couple of hours. I don't know, it certainly happened to me. And it just is so good. And the most phenomenal thing about the story, I think, is that this story benefits from being a video game, right? And I know that that seems like a really weird thing to say, but bear with me. There is a justification slash explanation for what I'm uh, going on about. See, if you watch a movie and you reach the end, if you re-watch that movie, it'll still be the same movie, right? You can't get different events. You can't get a different main character from the same movie, I mean. But if you play a video game, you, every time you replay it, it's going to be a little bit different, right? And obviously, because you may, might make different choices, your luck might be a little different, so on and so on. So when Neo Automata gives you multiple playthroughs, it also gives you multiple in-depth perspectives of different characters. When you finish the first playthrough and start the second playthrough as 9S, you may be experiencing a very similar story to 2Bs, but from 9S's perspective. Some people like to criticize this, and they say that it feels too samey. And I can perfectly understand why people would feel that way. They would feel like, okay, this is the same as the one before, except with a different, somewhat weaker character, so why should I care? And my thing is that it gives me a lot of Metal Gear 2 vibes, right? Where you start the game and you play as Solid Snake and you're the big hero and you do some really cool stuff. And then you start the game off as Raiden, this blonde haired, completely inexperienced, completely opinionated uh, younger person. And you're like, huh, who is this idiot? I want my Solid Snake back. I want my hero back. And throughout the story, you eventually end up seeing Solid Snake and seeing him do some amazing things. And you end up feeling like, this character is so cool. God, I wish I were him, is probably what you were saying when you were playing Metal Gear Solid 2. That's what I was saying anyway. And that's what the second playthrough is for, is for you, is to show you how amazing 2B is. See, the first playthrough is about making you feel like you are the best. You're the baddest android on Earth. You can kill any, mo any machine. You are unstoppable. And the second playthrough is about showing you what it's like to be close to someone who is that powerful and magnificent, knowing that you can never be their level, trying to do your little part to support someone so amazing, and hoping that it'll be enough. And always knowing that you will never be quite exactly as great as the person that you admire or care about or are supporting. A little dark, a little sad perhaps, but you know what? Sometimes these stories need to be told, and the second playthrough of Nier is just offering you 
a unique perspective on the same characters. And what's really interesting is that it also offers that same perspective on bosses and enemies, right? So you end up getting a little, little bits of information that is unique to the second playthrough, which makes the first story you experienced become a lot more deep and you understand some characters a lot better. And then you reach the third playthrough of Nier, right? If the first two playthroughs of Nier was about building a beautiful, delicate house of cards, the third playthrough of Nier Automata is about kicking the table on which the house of cards is built so hard that the cards go flying in every direction and the whole thing explodes. You might be wondering what the heck is this guy talking about? And here's what I mean. What I mean is that this game has the courage to actually spend the time to get you invested in characters and a world and a scenario and just start ripping it apart, right? And I don't mean in cheap uh, in cheap ways like sudden deaths or anything. I mean by making you truly question all the information that's been provided to you to make you feel like these characters perhaps are being lied to, perhaps they don't know everything, perhaps they're wrong, perhaps they might actually be doing something bad, and make you question so many things about the world of the game, about the characters, who's the good guy, who's the bad guy, what's really going on, like how far would you go to do what you think is right, and even raising up a lot of really interesting philosophical questions about humanity, about life, about death, about belief about love about society and about children about learning from people about trying to improve yourself this game has a lot to say in all of its side quests and its main quests and its characters and themes and everything that after i finished the game i was just i was just left in a state of whoa so after I finished this game, I was left in this kind of haze where I started thinking about really big ideas and big topics for a long, long time. I genuinely feel like the true ending of this game has given me an insight into myself as a person that I find helpful in my life to this day since the game, since I played the game, right? And I know that seems like a huge thing to say, but trust me when I say that this game changed me, dude. And maybe it won't do the same for you, you know? I don't know you. Maybe you, you'll just think it's just a really cool game with great hack and slash combat. And I don't blame you. But this game has a lot for you. And the more you dig, the more you get. And the story itself is the reason why you're here. And the story, a story like this, can only be told in a video game. And that, as people who love video games just makes us so happy, you know? Like, sure, you can have really cool video game stories, you know, you can have your JRPG plots about saving the world, you can have your Uncharted plots about finding really cool treasure or whatever, but at the same time, you could make a movie out of any of these things, right? You could make an Uncharted movie, you could make a Tomb Raider movie, they already have, like, thrice, I think? But there's no way to make a movie about Nier Automata without making the same movie thrice. Well, two and a half times, really, but who's counting? This game, this story... But there is no way to make a movie about the story of Nier Automata because it has to be a video game. It has to be played as a video game for the story to be conveyed. And that is phenomenal. That means that this story was built to be a game. The gameplay isn't just letting you go further along the story like a canoe along a river the gameplay is the tools through which you explore this story a story that can only happen in a video game and that is really worth celebrating isn't it here's a story that you can only play as a video game otherwise it just wouldn't be the same it's unique maybe not unique in video games but just it's unique in that sense like there's so little of it and i think that deserves all the credit so I think this is one of the most engaging, heart-rending, truly galaxy brain stories that I've experienced in a long time. And it has left a mark on me, I can tell you that for sure. <laughs> Thank you.
masterpiece and perfect are not words I really like to use when I describe media, when I review games, right? But here I am faced with a game that takes every aspect of what makes it what it is and just polish it to its absolute peak perfection, right? We have a game which has a phenomenal story, fantastic characters, memorable music to this day. It has really good graphics that I just feel like perfectly suit the aesthetic. I think that this game has immense post-game value. I found myself hugely emotional over a lot of the endings, especially what we call the true ending, no spoilers, but trust me when I say that this game is not just any other game. It is a special game in the sense that I feel like it is a once-in-a-lifetime level of creative genius coming together. Platinum Games, Yoko Taro, the composer of this serene and haunting OST, the voice actors, the character designers, every single part of this game coming together, every single part of this game coming together at peak performance, at perfection, to create something that is truly, truly memorable, unforgettable. I would honestly score this game more than 10 if I didn't think that would actually seem a little goofy. So I'm going to give it the best that I can. This is truly a masterpiece and it is a game that has, in my opinion, been one of the definitive creative outputs of the PS4 era, right? And if you ever want to try out a game that makes you think as much as you feel, a game that actually makes you give like a single thought maybe towards gameplay or music or how it suits the scene that's in a game that makes you think about stuff like life and death and philosophy and society and how people treat each other love all these kind of different topics this is the game for you this is not a chill and fun game that you can just play and put down because this game will suck your soul out but like in a good way and you'll really like it you know but hey this game is not for everyone, but if anybody plays it and likes it, I'm really happy for you, genuinely, because I played this game and I still can't stop thinking about it and talking about it, and I don't know, like, maybe you like that sort of thing. Maybe you are the kind of person for whom a game can make an impact and change your life. If that's the case, this is definitely a game to check out, so I hope you give it a try. And there you have it. And that is our review of Nier Automato. I hope you guys liked that one and see you in the next one. Bye bye.